Picking up with the effects of imperialism on Asia, today we will focus on Korea, which, as you know, because of the news of the death of Kim Jong-il, is currently divided into two countries, North and South Korea. We are going to rewind to the 1800s when Korea was ruled by the Chosen Dynasty. And Korean society was made up of distinct social class groups that were largely based on the result of one's performance on exams, either military or civil service or technical. And while it was most common for someone to stay in the same social class as their parents, there was some fluctuation and the social classes were not rigid. Even today, a common practice in Korea is to claim to have ancestors of young Bon ranking. Korea was also known for having a unique culture, which was certainly influenced by China, but had its own language and writing, an elaborate political system, and a fairly sophisticated economy, which was based on farming but had adapted over time to adopt agricultural changes, and even though wealth was based on land, Korea had its own currency. You'll remember that they were known for a specific type of blue-green porcelain known as celadon. So in addition to their own culture and literature and arts, you can see in the background here pieces of the Korean Celadon. And you'll also remember that at the start of the Meiji Restoration, Japan looked towards Korea as an opportunity to gain a foothold on the mainland where they needed natural resources to further their own industrialization. This image shows the battle sites of the Russo-Japanese War, the war that Japan fought with Russia. The resulting Treaty of Portsmouth, where the delegates from Russia and the delegates from Japan met in New Hampshire to iron out the peace treaty, which resulted in Korea becoming a Japanese colony. The name of Korea, when it is a colony of Japan, is called Chosen, and the Japanese do exactly what we saw the Europeans do elsewhere as they are taking over places. They're modernizing, they are trying to force the Japanese culture onto the Koreans, and they're building factories and railroads and communication systems. Koreans refer to this period as the Dark Age or the period of resistance. And the infamous Governor General Tarachi Masataki was known for suppressing protesters in a very brutal way. People were killed. Those who escaped often went on and founded anti-Japanese organizations in places including Hawaii and the United States. When the Japanese take over, they force Korea to adopt the Japanese language and culture. And if you remember, the highest social classes in Korea were also the most educated and intelligent, and most knew Japanese and easily complied with this edict. As students were only learning Japanese in school and were taught other aspects of Japanese culture, including bowing to the emperor, parents had to teach their children Korean in secret in order to keep the language alive. And it is pretty amazing that their language survived. In addition to forcing their culture, the Japanese also took their food. Korea produced an abundance of rice, but this was sent to Japan. And all of this led to the March 1st movement in 1919, which was a nonviolent protest brutally crushed by the Japanese. A last little anecdote takes place in the 1936 Olympics where a Korean won the medal in the marathon, but records even to this day show that Japan is the winner, despite recent efforts to give Korea credit. And as an early example of photoshopping, newspaper employees from the East Asia Daily erased out, literally with a pencil, the Japanese flag from the Koreans' uniform, and they were imprisoned, and the paper was closed down for nine months.